Hiya folks, welcome back to Workers and Resources, Soviet Republic. This is another test for containers. So if you've seen my previous two video test thingy-majigs, um, I tested every truck in the game that was capable of carrying vehicles to see how many nuclear casks, how many UF-6 containers, and how many shipping containers each truck could carry. That's a lot of trucks. Feel free to go back and watch those two videos or you can download the save game from this episode or the previous test uh, which has all the trucks there for you to take a look at if you would like to dive into the data. Uh, but today, instead of trucks, we're looking at trains and helicopters. These are the two remaining transport methods that we really need to compare. We're not going to compare ships because I don't want to. It's too much effort. <laughs> um, it can be assumed that pretty much any ship can take multiple of any container, so you, we don't really need to bother comparing them. Airplanes, on the other hand, there's only one plane that can take containers anyway, and it's from the Ukraine DLC, so we're not going to bother comp uh, checking out that. If you want to transport containers by plane, firstly, why? And secondly, you already know the answer, you need to use the Antonov. <laughs> so yeah, um, trains and helicopters are where, at, where we're at today. There are five cargo wagons that can carry vehicles. Two of them from the Soviet side, these are the ones with the stakes on the sides, if you can see that. And three of them from the NATO side. Uh, these ones can only carry vehicles. They can't carry any, like, steel or anything on its own. Right, so jumping straight in, in the same style as the last video, I did multiple different tests. This one is the test where they picked up as many 40-foot containers as possible, and it's pretty simple. You can see the two Soviet wagons can take one each. All the NATO wagons can take two each. They're double stackers, which is pretty awesome. Moving on to the second one, just 20 foot containers. Very similar for the NATO side, four containers equivalent to the, four, the two 40s and for the shorter of the two Soviet ones, also two 20s, but the longer Soviet one can take three 20s, which is higher capacity. So that's probably a good option if you're working with Soviet. So moving on, this is just picking up 10 foot containers and again, the two Soviet ones, we've got 40 feet in total in length, but this one can take 60 feet total in length. That can take six 10 foot containers, which is interesting because it couldn't take three 20 foot containers. The, the NATO ones are a little bit uh, more complex. This one's just the same, again, 40 on the bottom, 40 on the top for 80 feet total. Uh, this one can take five on each level for 10 total. This one's a bit uh, precarious, but it can take nine 10 foot ones total. And then we're going on to the mixed ones. This is, that one's kind of hard to see. This is where we tried to pick up a 40. We, we tried to pick up as many 40s as possible, and then tried to pick up 20s on top of that, and then 10s on top of that. So as you can see, this one picked up a 40 and a 20 uh, for a total of 60 feet's worth of uh, containers. This one picked up a 40. These three picked up two 40s, two 40s and a 10, two 40s and two 10s, respectively. These are the NATO ones again. Uh, and then one more test. This is when they picked up. We skipped the 40s, just went to the 20s, and then the 10s. So again, four 20 foot containers, two 20 foot containers, three 20 foot containers, and then four and two, four, four 40 and two 10 foot ones. And then again, the precarious one is four and one. So if effectively very similar results there. Uh, we've also got nuclear casks. Now I did, I was not expecting these to be, be stackable. I don't think these are actually stackable even on ships. Uh, but I, th I guess these container wagons have like supporting structure for the upper level so it's not actually stacked on top of each other it's stacked on two separate surfaces i guess um so yeah starting from the soviet ones the short one takes five the long one takes seven the nato ones 
the shortest one takes eight, the precarious one takes nine, and then the biggest one takes ten. Um, so that's pretty clear cut. Everything's got a different result there. <laughs> um, and then we go into the UF6. Uh, so the smallest one here can only take four. And then the, the next one up can take six. And then again, very similar for the NATO ones. Eight there, nine there and ten there. I've not really worked it out based on the number divided by the length of the train. But just from eyeballing it, it looks pretty clear that the biggest NATO one is the most efficient in how many you can carry um, for everything. If we remember in our previous test, the 20s contain disproportionately more. So for example, this one takes 23 tons of plastics, um, but this one, which technically has the same length of container, that'll only ha that's only got 18 tons of, tr of plastics. Then if we move on to this one, that's only got 20 tons. So again, the most efficient is always the 20 ton containers. So let's have a look between the single container size options. So again, 19 tons for the 20 foot one, but 20 tons for the 10 foot one. So there's less per container, like less per container meter, but because they can, because we can fit an extra one in here, this is the most efficient. Yeah, if you're using this biggest wagon and you only want to use one container type, 10 foot containers are the most efficient. You can get 20 tons on this, on this wagon. Uh, if you remember in the truck test, the 20 foot containers were more efficient because they're more, they're more dense in general. But this one, just the ability to add five containers worth rather than four, edges it out there. So that's a that's the a fun conclusion there. Moving on, helicopters. There are only two cargo helicopters that can take vehicles: the Mi-10 from the NATO, the Soviet side and the Sky Crane from the NATO side. So starting off with the, with forty foot containers. Neither of them can carry them at all. Simple as that. <laughs> 20 foot containers, each of them can take one container, which is absolutely fine. Uh, 10 foot containers, each of them can take three. Moving on to the mixed ones, we'll skip this one because we know they can't pick up 40 foot containers, so the two tests are gonna be the same. This is one 20 foot container and one 10 foot container, and both of them can do that. Uh, so, they're, so for shipping containers, both of those helicopters are absolutely identical in what they can carry. Uh, the most efficient, I believe, will be 120 and 110 for 6.9 tons of plastics, followed by three 10 foot containers for six tons, which is also the most efficient single container type. If you only want to have one container type, like the trains, this is also the 10 foot containers, which are most efficient. Okay, moving on to the nuclear fuel, we have the Mi-10 can carry three, the Sky Crane can carry two, and then the UF-6, the Mi-10 can carry five, the Sky Crane can only carry three. In conclusion, for helicopters, Mi-10 is your best bet in any situation. Anything nuclear, it can carry more. For anything shipping container, it can carry the same and it's like 50% faster than the Sky Crane as well. So yeah, sticking with the Soviet helicopter is unambiguously the best choice for moving containers around. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that was helpful. Like I said, the save game is going to be in the description for this one. It has all the trains with all their containers on them, all the helicopters with all their containers on them. It's got all the trucks from the previous video. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that was enlightening for everyone. I was I was certainly surprised by a few of these results. And let me know if you'd like me to do any other tests. Or if you've got any questions, concerns, comments. I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.